Good afternoon. Welcome to the tea table. I am so happy you have joined me today. And we're celebrating several things today. It seems like the month of March is so full of celebration. Today is Johann Sebastian Bach's birthday and we're going to have his music playing. In two days is the celebration of Purim. And that is for beautiful Hadassah Esther, the queen who has the most romantic story in all of the Bible. And she comes forth at a perfect time in history to save her people from destruction. It is such an incredible story. And it's in one of the smallest books of the Bible, the book of Esther. And I thought, if we're talking royal in the ancient times of the Bible, we have to have a gold tea set. So I am having a gold tea set to celebrate Queen Esther. I looked back on my different tea talks and I've done two on Esther because we've been doing this now for three years. And last year, I'm trying to fix my headdress here. Last year, we, I sang a song I wrote called The Ballad of Esther. And I'm not going to sing it again today. You can, it's on YouTube. You can go back and look at last year. And it's a ballad I wrote when I was very young because I was fascinated with the story of Esther. And it begins, it's a real ballad. A ballad is a story song. And it starts, there was a maiden fair who lived at Shoshan, a Jewish maiden, Esther. And her uncle Mordecai did bring Esther to the palace of the king. Though fair maidens came, from many a land. Esther in her God did stand, for she feared Jehovah and did pray, and his favor found on that glad day. Though fair maidens came from many a land, Esther in her God did stand. Esther called the Jews to fast for three days, to wait upon their God and pray. Esther cried, I care not if I die. I hope in God, I will not lie. Uncle Mordecai, Mordecai waited long at the gate to tell her of her people's fate, of cruel Haman and his evil plan to destroy the Jews throughout the land. And then the verse, Esther called the Jews to fast for three days for mercy for her people. Though the gallows high for Mordecai, the king turned and they were Haman's. It's a story, it's called the turning of the tables. When something so hopeless is happening and you feel like everything is against you, that's what it was like. Haman had made up stories because he wanted to destroy the Jews because he hated the Jews. And he lied. And Mordecai, the good uncle, said, Esther, perhaps you are born for such a time as this to save your people. And so this beautiful maiden, she didn't just fast and pray. If you read the Bible, it says she took off her royal gowns, took off her perfumes, took off her jewels, and covered her head with ashes and dung, showing that she was mourning and weeping and crying out to God in a very serious state with her maidens. God heard, God turned the tables. It's such a wonderful story. Perhaps we need a turning of the tables now in history. It seems like we're always in a battle, aren't we? Good versus evil. 
but good wins in the end. Yes, it does. Well, if you haven't gotten your tea yet, please pause and get your tea. And look at this lovely, this I call my grandchildren's set because of course it's not real gold, but it's metallic brass. And so they can't harm this set. And I let them play with this set, believe it or not. And they go right to it and they're very careful. And little Cambria and Finn and Juno, they know that's, that's their little tea set. So we're starting young around our house to have tea. We want everyone to feel very, very welcome for tea, no matter how little or how big. And let's pour out, whoops. This is a very delicate cup. Oh my goodness. This is so delicate. It is so delicate, and I'm gonna show it to you. It's got little pictures of romantic girl and boy, and it's from Europe, from before the wars. It's really old. It's, I don't have any other cup like this. If you can see it close, whoops, it's dripping. It's like a little pedestal cup. Isn't it gorgeous with that wonderful burnt orange? Oh, I forgot to put my, well, you know, it tastes good without the milk. I think I'll have it plain. Mmm, that is delicious. I think I'll put it down where I can pick it up again. Yes, Queen Esther is a beautiful, a woman using her beauty for goodness to help her people. Isn't that beautiful? Now my headdress I'm wearing today, it could be from any country. It's actually from Budapest, Hungary, brought to me by a dear friend of the tea table, Elizabeth. And I thought it just could be perfect for today. So I hope you like it. Now I'm going to show you This is a really special piece of, called tuxedo cake. Whoops, it's from a birthday party. And I put strawberries around it. Isn't it beautiful? It was so big. I have kept it in my freezer and every once in a while people have a slice of it. And that is very Victorian. Whoops, you know, when the Victorians were having tea, and it didn't matter if it were the upper classes or the middle classes or whatever class, they would have often a big cake and it would be the tea cake for the week. And it would last all week. They would just have a very thin slice every day at tea time with whatever else was served. I'm sorry, this is kind of wandering around here, but it lasted and they didn't overdo it because it was just a little slice with wonderful hot tea. Oh my. Mm. Now I brought a little purse. I don't know what they carried for if the ladies had a little purse, but if Esther had a purse, it would be something like this. This is the most unique little purse I own. It sits on my dresser and it unsnaps and opens like this. And then you can put something inside. It even has a zipper that you can zip shut to keep your items safe. And then you close it like that and it snaps. Isn't that absolutely darling? I just thought this is for today, for the tea table. Yes, it is. It's for you. I bring this for you to inspire you with color and beauty. 
And I wrote a poem this week that I will read to you next week. I don't have it in front of me and I, I can't memorize everything I write. But you know, I woke up in the night and if I wake up in the night, I will usually try to meditate on scripture or, um, or sometimes I feel God gives me a song or a poem. And this was, I hear the song, I hear a song. And it's all about nature and spring and the fact that God has written a song that's singing all around us, the birds, the flowers, the rivers, the brooks, the oceans. There's so much singing and noise in nature, isn't there? It's not just noise. Every morning I'm getting different birds waking me up. We live in a place where the birds, my husband was saying today, they must be migrating south because we get different birds over the water and over on my trees every day. I'm hearing new sounds and I am not a bird watcher. So I only know a few of the songs, but I do know the warbler and I heard the warbler. Oh yes. Oh, I love those birds. I don't know exactly how this is there. I think that's it. We're getting it right as we go. It's just us on the tea table. We're all just family, aren't we? Yes. I feel so close to all of you. Thank you so much for watching and being a part and for your comments and your likes and your subscribing. Thank you. Please, if you want to cover anything on the tea table that I have forgotten that would be of interest, write in the comment section a suggestion and I'll try to cover it, okay? Well, there's something else we're going to cover today because it's a big week. And I said we're going to cover Johann Sebastian Bach's birthday. We've talked so much about Bach on this tea time. But he is almost an exhaustive subject. That means it can go on and on. It doesn't mean it makes you tired. Exhaustive is a big word for the children on here that is used to describe a body of writing or a person or a study that it means it's just so big that it, there's no end. And that is like very much Johann Sebastian Bach, isn't it? Yes. You know, remember he, he had, he was born into a home with all of the people, his relatives and everyone back five or seven generations were musicians as far back as they could find. And the oldest Bach they found had been a miller. And that is where you have, when they say miller in those days, they are talking about a very, nothing is electric, remember. Nothing is, we're talking, Bach is born in the uh, 17s, late 16s, and he's living in the 17s. But... His relatives would be back, that we're talking about way back. And so it's a windmill. And it, a windmill was, that's why it's called a mill, a windmill, done by wind. I love the windmills because they're, they're a cross. The, the ones in Europe are a cross. Isn't that beautiful? Just like the Scottish plaid, it's a cross. I think it's very beautiful. And the windmills are so romantic. Well, this older relative of Bach, it is believed that he would hear the rhythm of the windmill going, whatever rhythm that was, and it gave him a sense of beat and rhythm. And that is what they are attributing, the greatness of the Bach musicians. And I believe the name Bach in German means brook, like a flowing brook of music, the babbling brook. And so Johann Sebastian Bach had been around music and he played the violin as a young boy and he sang in the choir, beautiful voice. And then his parents died when he was like 11, 10 or 11. And he was left as really an orphan. His older brother had him come and live with him. But it wasn't very long before that older brother recognized Bach's genius and sadly, he was jealous. 
you know, kind of reminds us of Cain and Abel. And he would hide the music and he didn't encourage Bach. Bach would have to get up at night and sneak to the piano to try and find music that he would copy because that was the method that people used for writing music, was copying music. That's how they learned music. We learn it in, with a different method today, but I, I, I think we should look back at that method because look at his greatness and understanding. Bach is an absolute genius. Well, then as a young man, he found the pipe organ. And when he found that, he said, I found what I love. And he never looked back and he started composing and he composed and composed, he married, he had eight beautiful children, and then his beloved wife died. Well, he was so sad, but then he remarried another Magdalena and had a beautiful marriage, and they had eight more, or nine children. I think he had 18 children altogether, but only half of them lived into adulthood, because in those days, they had no medicine, and people, infant mortality rate was very high and there was disease and it was a miracle when somebody would live a long life and um so johann sebastian bach he's a contemporary with the american founding fathers he's in the late 17s and thomas jefferson played the violin he didn't get to meet bach but he loved to play bach and he had concerts in the White House with string quartets. Yes, he did. And he was a Renaissance man, Thomas Jefferson. Another contemporary of Bach is the great John Wesley, the preacher, the minister, and his brother, Charles Wesley, who wrote over 3,000 hymns in England, and I'm sure Bach influenced them. Well, it is said that if you were to sit at a table and start copying music, and you were to copy every piece that Bach wrote, it would take you 80 years. He's phenomenal. And Bach gave all glory to God. Every piece of music he wrote, he would sign it to the glory of God. He wrote the St. Matthew's Passion, which we're going to play next week for Easter. He wrote the St. John's Passion. He, he wrote so many pieces for violin, for cello, for orchestra, for chamber, for all the instruments. He wrote for everything. And he is considered, he comes, you know, he comes about 150 years after Martin Luther dies. And he was a Lutheran and he took that wonderful theology of freedom in Christ and put it in music, dancing and singing and grace we're saved by grace and faith and not by works. His music is so filled with life. And the last time I was in Europe, I think I've told you this before, I really realized how big Bach was because in Vienna you have Beethoven, you have Mozart, and then of course Haydn um, and Handel is a contemporary of Bach's, but these men were so influenced by Bach, they all looked to Johann Sebastian Bach as their father. He's just a one, he stands alone. He's the apex of classical music and he's, he takes the Baroque and turns it into, it moves from him into the classical with Mozart and Beethoven. Fabulous study. Well, we could go on and on about Bach. But the one thing that I really love about him is he didn't let hardships get him down. He actually was not that famous in his lifetime like he is today. In his town, he was famous, but he had struggles. There's always competitiveness, jealousy, and, and difficulties with people. And Bach was underpaid, and he died without any money at all and was buried in a very obscure grave. And then a hundred years later, it was Felix Mendelssohn, the beautiful Felix Mendelssohn, who rediscovered Bach and started playing his music and brought it out. And the rest is history. Bach has been the king ever since. Well, one other thing I want to talk about today is 
Palm Sunday, yes. And I have my Easter lily. It has one, two, three, four buds, five. Five buds, five means grace. Hopefully next week it will be blooming and we'll have it on the tea table. Isn't that nice? I just think this is a really wonderful time of year. And Bach's birthday is the 21st, which is today. And then I have a birthday on the 23rd. And I feel so privileged to be born right by Bach. And then after me is Haydn. There are so many composers born in the month of March. March is the month of turn. It's from winter to spring. And it's rainbows and it's drama and it's sunshine and wind, clouds and rain. It's a beautiful month. I love March. I'm happy I was born in March. You know, there's not too much going on that makes a birthday celebration hard. And so I really feel like I love being born in March. And I think I told you this before on the tea talk, but if you look in the book of Esther, it will say the third month, the 23rd day, which is actually my birthday, was when the Jews were freed and she gave the king gave the proclamation, the Jews are free. And the gallows that Haman had built for Mordecai turned and they were meant for Haman's. Really, it's an important story. Don't ever, ever be a part of harming anyone or anything that is innocent. You know, when someone has done nothing to harm you, don't, don't talk about them. Don't be negative. No, we must keep our words pure and sweet and kind and good. And Queen Esther represents that. She's so good. Yes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. And I hope you have a lot of tea this week. March is a wonderful month for tea. It's cold and we need to be warmed up. Sometimes we don't know what to wear in March because last week here, we were having 70 degree weather. And I thought, oh my goodness, what do I wear? Am I safe to really, because we don't know, it can turn on a dime. Mm. Oh my goodness, this little cup is so sweet. I just love this little cup. And I hope you've enjoyed the gold tea set. I wish there were a way for me to have this tea set on display the whole time we're having our tea talk, but I'll hold it for you again. It's so important to surround ourselves with color, light, and beauty and to take the best things we have and use them. Don't keep them locked in a cupboard for the rainy day. Use them today. You won't be sorry. China is very strong. I have rarely broke any piece of china. Silver is strong. When sterling is strong, you can use it. You can use your teapots, use your tea things. I know that the generation before us they were from the depression and they were always saving everything for, oh, we want to make sure they were so, they had suffered so much in the depression, but who, what were they saving it for? So many people ended up when they're old and their children are taking their things, the things were never used. That's sad. I say use today, whatever you have, do your best. Make it a blessing to others. If you have too much, share with others. Give. I like to share my china. If I have someone come to my house and they really love something, I'll give it to them. I like to share. And it seems like the more I give, the more I get. I'm not doing it for that reason, but 
I, 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 I seem to have more and more and I, I don't know how that happens, but it's multiplication. My mother used to tell me, you only keep what you give away. Yes, be generous. It's the only way to live. Oh, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, and this is the beautiful Bach piece. Oh my goodness, is that just gorgeous? Let's just listen to it for a minute. And Palm Sunday is this week, getting ready for that, right? It's the beginning of the Easter Holy Week. When Jesus came on the donkey and they all threw palms, yes. And then we'll have Monday, Thursday, and we'll have Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and then we will have Easter. It's come so quickly this year. I believe that this is my third Easter with you. I believe that this was started at Easter Tide. I think it was started on Palm Sunday three years ago. We've been together. Isn't this great? It's sure been a wonderful time. I love all of you and I appreciate you. You're beautiful people. And we want to love the good and the true and the beautiful and know that good always overcomes evil. The light always follows the darkness. The dawn breaks through. Yes. And that's what the tea talk is. We're breaking through. We're the tea talk of good news and blessings. Please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you want a notification, push the notification bell. You'll be notified. Please share. And if you like, I appreciate the like button. And please make a comment. They mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. And I will be thinking of you and let's prepare our hearts for beautiful Easter tide. An Easter tea party would be very nice. Yes. I have a bunny mold and I'm going to make a big bunny cake. I hope I get it done by the next tea talk. I've never done it. I've had this mold for years and I thought I have to do something with this mold. So I'm going to try to make a white coconut cake with white marshmallow frosting with coconut on it and put a few Easter eggs on it. It's a big goal, isn't it? I'm going to try. Okay, thank you so much and God bless each one of you and your families and do a good deed for someone this week. Write a note, make a call, send a text and give something to someone else, especially people that can't give you anything back. That's where the greatest joy comes, giving is living. Yes, gratefulness and giving keys to abundant living. Thank you. We'll just listen to the end of this as we end.
Happy birthday, Johann Sebastian Bach.